Welcome to the 103rd episode of the Reading and Writing Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Rutherford. Stay tuned for my interview with Richard Knack. Richard is the New York Times bestselling author of 45 fantasy novels. His latest novel is Legends of the Dragon Realm, Shade. Stay tuned for the interview. Welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. My guest today is Richard Knack, the New York Times bestselling author of 45 novels, including trilogies from the World of Warcraft and Diablo video game worlds. Knack's latest novel is Legends of the Dragon Realm Shade. Richard, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Sure. Well, first, can I ask you to read the first three to four paragraphs of Legends of the Dragon Realm Shade? I'd be happy to. Chapter One, The Sorcerer. Irelium by the Sea remained a prosperous city even during the uncertain times now spreading across the land. It was a major hub for import and export, and its ruler was known for relative fairness to his subjects, be they of his kind or of other races. Not all dragons were so benevolent. Tall, three massive ships filled the harbor, many of them loading or unloading cargo. A sleeker vessel with all the hints of being a state-sanctioned privateer began to pull away from the dock. Workers and sailors in free-flowing garments designed for quick movement went about a multitude of tasks as they intermingled with fishmongers, traders, and customers. Armed patrols marched through the throngs, wary guards keeping an eye out for any disorder. Children scurried among the adults, ignoring reproving eyes. At first glance, Aurelian might have been any other city in all the world, save that many of its inhabitants were scaled. Humans dominated numbers, but it was clear that they did not dominate in power. While signs of respect did pass between them and the members of the other prominent race, authority without a doubt rested in the latter. After all, were the drakes not the dragon's children? Great. Well, if the listeners haven't, uh, if the listeners aren't familiar with your Dragon Realm series, how would you describe the series, and specifically, how would you describe your latest novel, the the eighth book of the series, Legends of the Dragon Realm: Shade? Uh, the Dragon Realm is, is a uh, land ruled by these shape shifting uh, creatures called the Dragon Kings. They basically have two forms: the uh, dragon form, and then they have a scaled night form, so to speak, all magical. They, they vary from those who are very um, um, ardent about keeping humans and other races under their thumb or are ones that are willing to work with them or ones that even admire humans. It depends on where you are, uh, which causes some, uh, some matters of discussion and confusion between the Dragon Kings, which is, which is what helps our heroes in, this, in these stories uh, manage to survive. This one, this one story here concerns one of the more popular characters of this world, Shade. Shade is not his real name. Shade is what he's become called by, by others uh, because he is, a, uh, he is a character, a sorcerer from a, a race long past, long before the Dragon Kings even, that uh, briefly appeared in this land. And because of their, their disdain for paying attention to the uh, results of so much use of their power, they brought themselves down. Shade is the last survivor. Shade uh, tried to serve, tried to keep himself from dying. And unfortunately, his spell, which you'll learn more about in here, uh, did kind of keep him from dying in a sense. He does die, but he comes back. Unfortunately, he comes back at the opposite end of the spectrum, so to speak. If he was your friend before, he'll be your enemy now. And so he's been trying to cure himself all this time while uh, also trying to uh, make up for what he's done when he was bad and for all, and so on. Now Shade thinks he's found the uh, solution to his uh, problem. Uh, unfortunately, there are others that want to use that to manipulate him, uh, including the very land itself. Interesting. Well, um, I know that you started your writing career writing for the Dragonlance series with TSR, mm -hmm. the publishers of Dungeons and Dragons. Can you talk about what led you to write and, and how you sold your first novel and what it was like writing for TSR at that time when, when Dragonlance was really exploding in popularity? Well, I had always enjoyed reading, so, so I, of course... When I could, I started making up my own stories. I always enjoyed playing people's worlds I read, for instance, Rogers Blasny and Andre Norton, to name a couple, uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs. 
And so I began writing my own stories uh, through my child, through childhood and up. Uh, obviously, nothing that really would sell at that time. But I kept writing, uh, going into high school and then college. And uh, I was actually a chemistry major, as some people have seen from the uh, dedication of Legend of Humor. Uh, but I decided to switch over to uh, writing because that just seemed to be more of my course. Uh, I uh, continued to uh, work on uh, some different uh, ideas out of college uh, and uh, had actually written a couple of full manuscripts. I lived in Chicago at that time and um, was reminded that uh, TSR was up uh, in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, and only an hour and a half away from me. So I literally took those writing samples and drove up and walked in off the street. <laughs> you can't do that much at places these days. But uh, it no, out. no. <laughs> I, Literally walked in off the street, I walked up to the receptions, asked if I could speak to one of the editors. And uh, after she got over her shock, she called the book editor, and uh, he actually came out and spoke to me. And I introduced myself, gave him the writing, a couple of writing samples, and he was very kind. He said, if I didn't uh, hear from him in a couple of weeks, I should call him back. Well, I didn't hear from him in a couple of weeks, so I called him back. And uh, he was, I think it was kind of a test. He wanted to see how determined I was. But he said, we, we like your writing style. We're only publishing this one series right now. But would you be interested in submitting some short story ideas to, uh, to our Dragonlance world? And I was like, okay. I had I'd heard of it. I had not had a chance to read it. So I agreed because uh, being active, if I wanted to submit, have a chance to publish in a, in, a, in a sort of fiction I enjoy. So I ran out, read the uh, first trilogy, and I believe the... First, maybe the second novel in the, in the second trilogy by Margaret Weiss and Dre Zickman. And then uh, came up with four story ideas, figuring if I came up with four, maybe one would sell. And submitted those to the editor. And he got back to me and said, we'd like to buy three of these. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it turned out that they were going to have three anthologies and uh, they are going to put me in each one of them. So it's, all of a sudden I had my first three sales. And uh, what was funny is they actually asked me a short time later to say if I wanted to try a fourth story because they had a space open up. And by that time, something else had happened, though. Um, I'd gone back to working on my own stuff, you know, excited that I'd already also been writing these stories. But they had called me soon after that to ask me if, based on the fact that they really liked the way I handled noble characters such as knights, you know, paladins, such things like that, if I'd be interested in writing the story of Huma, the knight who first wields the dragon lance. He's mentioned as legend in the, in the original Chronicles, but he's been dead for hundreds of years. And um, I uh, thought about it for about two seconds and said, sure. <laughs> because, um, I mean, because I knew that the series was popular, I, I was very happy to be playing in this world because it was a, uh, a world much of the type that I've always enjoyed reading. And so I, I, looked, I looked at what little their information was on Huma, um, started to uh, come up with some ideas and uh, to make a, sh- uh, a story short for a moment um, everything, everything went great in, in the end the book uh, was New York Times bestseller has continued to have a lot of popularity to these days which, which I'm happy that it is now in ebook form at least now since TSR has not been doing much with Dragonlance in terms of the paperbacks anymore these days right. but uh, it's uh, a story one I'm very proud of um, in terms of uh, how I was writing for TSR, uh, I'll give you a little, th- this is my baptism by fire that you, you'll be interested in, I think. <laughs> everything, everything pretty much went well. I went through three, basically three major drafts. I wrote a version. They didn't like how that went. I wrote a set part of a second version. I didn't like how it went. So I kind of combined the style of one, of one version with the, with the storyline of the second version, came up with a third version, which is one they enjoyed. And so everything was going fine. Went through the editing, went through the, everything, you know, all the back and forth and everything. Uh, we got to the point where the galleys were coming. Now, those who, who know books know the galleys are, you know, the printed pages, how they'll look in the book. Uh, and you basically go through looking for typos. Nothing, no problem, no big deal. Well, I, at my last job I was working at, I had access to uh, the mailing room. So I was having things shipped to me there, you know, in case I needed to have something done quickly. I got a phone call at work. And telling me that uh, they were sending me the galleys overnight. Um, they needed me to do something with them. Uh, it, this, this is after I thought I was done with the galleys, mind you. 
uh, they, they had printed up some 400,000 plus book covers, to which I'm like, yay. Uh, however, they, they had a problem. They, 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 they had discovered that the, the galleys proved that the book was too big for the covers, <laughs> which I'd never heard of and I've not heard of since. But uh, so they basically needed me to edit out uh, some uh, 75 to 80 pages. For the, out of the galleys for this. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh, and yes, I they need I needed to do this overnight. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it was either that or they edited it. I'm like, I'll edit it, thank you. And uh, I basically told my boss, who was very understanding, knew knew what I was doing on the side. I was going to take the next day off. Uh, got the got this uh, got the manuscript, brought it home. Started work at five thirty. Stopped at 3.30 in the morning because anything I edited out was going to be detrimental after that. And then uh, got about two or three hours of sleep and started over again. Uh, I edited out, if I think about maybe eight pages, uh, literally. Then I also edited out paragraphs. Uh, I, edited, I, I combined a couple chapters. I drew, went, at, that, at some points, drew, you know, went through ed lines and different lines. And I, mean, I, I did a pretty good job. I found one little, there was one little typo that I, that I made from that, but uh, overall, I was very happy. But uh, I can't imagine having to do much stranger for a book, especially my first one. And, and were you doing this all on the, the printout of the galleys? Yep. Wow, that, that's amazing. Uh, so so as, as I mentioned earlier, not only did you write for TSR and, and the Dungeons and & Dragons and, and, and Dragonlance, but you've also written... Um, media tie-in fiction for some really popular, hugely best-selling video games, World of Warcraft and, and Diablo. Uh, out of out of all of your experience, you know, are you comfortable saying, you know, is there one that you particularly enjoy um, going back to <clears throat> and writing for? I, I've I've always enjoyed going and writing all the worlds that I've been in. Um, I mean, obviously, World of Warcraft. Obviously, I've done a number of novels in there, and it's got such a rich history in its world, mm-hmm. uh, which, which I've had up, which they've had me update a few times. So you know, I want people going like that hasn't happened. I said no, that's the way they have it now. You know, so but I enjoy going in that world. It is very uh, full of characters that I enjoy, situations that are fantastic. Um, I. Uh, it's every time I've gone back there. It's it's been I, you know I've seen new things uh, that have made it even more of a complex world. I mean, it is very much a living, breathing world in many ways, uh, um, and I'm happy to be a part of it to, to uh, add my part to it. Um, and I've also I've also enjoyed Diablo because um, I like that kind of shadowy quest sort of fantasy. There's certain types of characters I enjoy in there. Uh, wouldn't mind going back to that again sometime. Uh, people have always keep asking me about my necromancer Zael. Character I created for that series, uh, he was he's been real fun. Um, overall, like I said, I've I've enjoyed all the worlds I've played in. Um, That's great. It's just the, just the way I am. Yep. So so, what's the process like for you when you're working on a book in your own kind of universe or setting, such as Legends of the Dragon Realm versus a media tie-in novel? Is the writing process at this point kind of similar? Do you do do you approach plotting and outlining the same way that you would do a, a media tie-in project? There's a little bit of a difference. With the media tie-in product, uh, projects, I usually have a, a number of uh, pieces of reference material that they've sent me. I, you, know, you know, there's, there's uh, history guidelines. There's um, updates on what they've changed in the, uh, the game world. There's uh, screenshots of various things to make sure we can try to get them close to what they're supposed to be. Um, whereas with my own series, I'm obviously more familiar with that in many ways. Uh, you know, that stuff is deeply ingrained in my head. <laughs> uh, but I still will look back, since, I've, since this has been written over the space of some 20 years, uh, I will go back and, and look for names of you know, characters, uh, make sure I still know who I, you know th- their personal history. Uh, double check and make sure I've caught I've uh, I've remembered a situation properly over the years. So so there's obviously I go back and have to and have to thumb through and read, you know, different, read different sections of novels you know, where they, where they re, um, are attached to a character that I'm working with now just to see if see if I, I'm if the flow is going as I believe it is. So, um, there's a synopsis for each one of them, usually more detailed in some ways with the uh, with the books I do for the other people's worlds, because 
they have to go through and see if there's anything they're correcting on their end already and I don't know yet. So whereas I, mine basically is I just going back to my previous novels right. and go basing at that. So so there's there's a complexity on working with the media tie-in uh, that in some ways that there isn't with working with my own world. But um, to me, it's 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 just part of the uh, the whole creative process. Sure. Given that you're you're writing these tie-in novels based uh, on video games and role-playing games, do you ever do any of that in your spare time, or do you? Just grab a beer and watch a football game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, and I do play the games. I uh, they usually keep. I usually get the collector's editions from uh, Blizzard, for instance, on, on the Warcraft stuff, especially. Uh, I don't get to play as often as I would like to because I'm obviously working on the projects for them, amongst other things. Uh, but I try. I try to get in there as consistently as I can. Um, I will never be able to make my characters. Uh, rise up as quickly as other people do just because of that. I, I'll sure. jump in, go around, look at a few things, fight a few things, and, and then have to jump out and start working again and then um, wait until I get a next chance to do it. Uh, it's, uh, but like I said, as, as much as I can get it, as much as I can get it, play the game, I, I will do that. Um, but with the, with the game people, you know, get that project done first, get that story done first because that's most important. Gotcha. Well, well, given all of your experience at this point of, of, of writing the novels that you've written, what tips or advice would you offer for aspiring writers? No, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I mean, it's going to sound really, really simplistic, but first of all, you have to write. Uh, it's a bad, there's, I've always run into a lot of people who says, I want to be a writer, I want to write a story, and they, they haven't managed to get anything down but uh, a couple pages or maybe a chapter or two. Um, you have to try to write on a regular basis, even if it's not that long of a time each time. But you know, hopefully, you can get an hour at a time, and uh, you know, just keep pushing away at it. If you find yourself really stuck on one story, do you try to develop a second one so you can go back and forth between them? Um, for instance, um, when I was when I was working a number on some of the later Dragon, excuse me, Warcraft novels, uh, I have I have another book called Dragon Mound from a publisher called Sea Line Books. I was working on that on the side in part. And so, you know, if, if something stuck on on, on uh, the Warcraft novel, I would go back to Dragon Mound and uh, work on that, and then vice versa. So it's always good to have two things going on, in my opinion, so that you, if you get caught up on one, you can go to the other one, work on that for a bit, and then come back to it. Sure. Uh, and like I said, then be, be stubborn. You know, um, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be rejected, and it doesn't necessarily, you know the end of everything. You just got to keep pushing away and uh, keep pushing. Gotcha. Um, given, given that you, that you do write uh, media tie in fiction, in addition to your own work, are there any universes or video games or, or worlds that you've thought about? Wow. I'd really like to, to take a shot at that. Well, there's a, there's a, there's a few different ones, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm going to, uh, I'm doing pretty. I'm, I'm I'm doing fine with what I'm doing. I mean, if somebody thinks that I'm I'm good for their particular world, that you know, they just have to contact me and see if if I, I'm interested. If it's something I think I can give them, um, what they want. For, you know, I always want to make sure I can, I can give the uh, the people what they want for their world. If I don't feel it's right for me, then I'll re- then I'll turn it down. I mean, I've had to do that a couple of times um, with some of the world that I didn't feel that was my cup of tea. Right, right. Uh, but uh, there's 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 a few of them out there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to name any specific ones okay, right now. That's fine. But, uh, that's fine. But yeah, you know, you know, fantasy or even some some science fiction ones. I'm in, I'm interested too. I, I like science fiction. I just have people happen to like my my uh, epic fantasy a lot. There, be it uh, the Dragon Realm, Dragon Mound, or all my Warcraft, Diablo, etc. Stuff. So. Sure, sure. Well. Do you still have a chance to to read in your your you know limited spare time? <laughs> Not near as much as I would like. <laughs> uh, when I was when I first became a full time writer, I go, oh good, now I can read more. Yeah. <laughs> Not if you're <laughs> if you're actually writing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I do, you know, once in a while, I'm mean, not once in a while, but uh, I'm, I'm often asked to uh, to write blurbs for novels, so I'll use that as an excuse to uh, to read those. As I have to, I have to read this. Or if there's a book in a series that I'm working with, they'll say, "Here, here's a book by this other author," and I'll, you know, go through that and it'll give me another excuse to read something. And then on a very rare occasion, I can actually just, you know, grab something from my in my stack of my ever increasing stack of books that I've got, I've attained from one place or another, and 
and read something from that. And 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 given that, what what you know in the last year or two uh, has have you read that that really impressed you and that, that that kind of stuck with you that you would recommend? Anything come to mind? Uh, I've uh, I've enjoyed uh, Chris Evans' um, Iron Elves series, his trilogy. Uh, mm-hmm. It was it was published by Gallery Books, which is my publisher. I was asked to read the first one you know, to do a blurb, and I thought, okay, fine, sounds like something interesting. But I really got into the uh, the characters. It's a uh, it's kind of a Napoleonic era sort of uh, fantasy world. Yeah, I actually interviewed him. Okay, cool. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm talking about. And yeah, I really, yeah, I, I've read those. They're they're fun. They are fun. I wouldn't mind returning to that world again. So that, <laughs> that one started out as is. Can you read this book for a blurb? And then it was, then it was like, when's the next book coming out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, well, what are you working on now? What are you writing? Well, well, in addition to uh, compiling some stuff for some uh, some other Dragon Realm fiction, I've, I've done, I, on occasion I do these novellas that are published online that I publish online for for readers of my uh, series. Um, doing some doing some of that stuff, uh, working on some projects that I can't mention because of NDAs, sure. non disclosure sure. agreements, uh, and also uh, uh, compiling some some material and doing some writing on uh, Wake of the Worm. Which is the expected sequel to uh, Dragon Mound, the one I mentioned from Sea Lion Books. Right. Uh, if people enjoy my Dragon. If people enjoy my Dragon Realm or my uh, Warcraft stuff, they'll like Dragon Mound too. So, so that's that's the sort of stuff I'm working on now. And then I've got, so I've got a couple other projects on tap in the future, but uh, still waiting to, for information on those. So right. I, again, a lot of stuff I can't men- mention sure, and, sure. and spread over a long period of time. So yeah. if I mention one, if I could mention a couple of them, it'd be like. When's this coming out? I don't know, four or five years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll just we'll just keep a watch out. So, um, I, I'm <clears throat> you you mentioned the novellas that you're that you're writing uh, for that you publish online. Where can people find that at? Well, they uh, they can find out information on how to subscribe to those uh, um, at richardanack.com. Um, I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. If people, if people come and enjoy my Twitter or, or like my page, um, on the, and you'll see, you'll see information about all my stuff on richardaynack.com. Um, I'm, even though I have, I have several people who, uh, I've offered to help me despite the fact that it's, it's, it's something I don't obviously get finished quickly enough. I try to make, I try to do the stuff on my website myself just because I'm that kind of hands-on person, even though, yes, I'm not the most technically literate in some ways. But uh, at least you know if it's on my website that I had a hand in it. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Well, again, we've been speaking with Richard Knack, best-selling author of many fantasy novels. Richard's latest novel is Legends of the Dragon Realm Shade. It's available in bookstores now, so definitely check it out. Richard, thanks for doing the interview. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Almost 90% of women have cellulite. And guess what? It's not their fault. We don't choose cellulite, but we can choose a different way to treat it. Meet Quo, Collagenase Clostridium Histolyticum, AAES, the first and only FDA-approved prescription injectable for moderate to severe cellulite in the buttocks of adult women. This non-surgical treatment is injected by an aesthetic specialist in 10 minutes or less. Individual results may vary. Do not receive if you are allergic to any collagenase or ingredients in Quo or have an infection at the treatment site may cause serious side effects, allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis and injection site bruising. Seek medical help right away for any signs of allergic hypersensitivity. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions. If you have a bleeding condition or take medicine that prevents clotting. Most common side effects include bruising, pain, hardness, itching, redness, discoloration, swelling, and warmth at the injection site. Ask your doctor about all possible side effects and for product information. If you're ready to get to the bottom of your cellulite, learn more and find a specialist at Quo.com. 